Hey everyone, Will here. So for today's video, we are going to be analyzing the history of PFLAG. That means we're going to be going over all aspects of this civil rights organization, including the origins of this group, the importance of this group, and the legacy of this group. So without further ado, let's begin. So PFLAG, also referred to as the Parents, Families, and Friends of Lesbians and Gays, was the first organization in the United States to unite parents, families, and allies with people who were gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and queer. PFLAG is also the largest organization that unites allies with members of the LGBTQ community, containing over 400 active chapters across the United States with more than 200,000 members and supporters. So the story behind PFLAG begins back in April of 1972. At this time, there was a major societal stigma associated with being openly gay in the United States. This stigma was seen firsthand by an elementary school teacher named Jeannie Manford and her husband when they received a phone call from a hospital informing them that their son Morty, a gay activist, had been severely beaten while distributing flyers inside the fifth annual Inner Circle Dinner, a political gathering that took place in New York City. In response to this terrible incident, Manford wrote a public letter to the New York Post identifying herself as the mother of an injured gay protester while simultaneously expressing concern over a delayed response from law enforcement. After publishing this letter, Manford, alongside her husband and son, gave television and radio interviews in several cities across the country. On June 25th, Jeannie Manford attended the New York Pride March alongside her son, carrying a hand-lettered sign that read, Parents of Gays Unite in Support for Our Children. After receiving positive feedback at the protest, Jeannie Manford and her son developed an idea for an organization of the parents of lesbians and gays that could be a bridge between the homosexual community and the heterosexual community. The first formal meeting for this new organization took place on March 11, 1973, at the Metropolitan Duane Methodist Church in Greenwich Village. While the first meeting had approximately 20 people in attendance, by 1976 the Los Angeles chapter of PFLAG held their first meeting of 30 parents. As the PFLAG organization grew, the group decided to work alongside other LGBTQ advocacy groups to help stop the Briggs Initiative a ballot measure that attempted to prohibit gay and lesbian Americans from working in California's public schools. Following this, representatives from these LGBTQ advocacy groups later met in Washington, D.C., following the iconic 1979 National March on Washington for lesbian and gay rights. By 1980, the PFLAG organization began to distribute information to educational institutions and communities of faith nationwide, establishing itself as a prominent source of information for the general public. After an organizer for the PFLAG Los Angeles chapter named Del Starr discussed the purpose of the group with an American column known as Dear Abby, Abigail chose to mention PFLAG in one of her published columns. The group's Los Angeles chapter then received more than 7,500 letters requesting information from the group. Every letter was answered by a member of the Los Angeles chapter, highlighting the group's dedication and commitment to their ongoing fight to secure full civil rights for LGBTQ Americans. In 1982, PFLAG was incorporated in California and granted nonprofit tax exempt status. Throughout the 1980s, the PFLAG organization worked to end the practice of discharging U.S. military service members who were discovered to be homosexual. In 1987, the organization then moved to Denver, Colorado under PFLAG president Eleanor LeWallen. By the late 1980s, the PFLAG organization began to have significant success in establishing chapters throughout rural communities in the United States. 
In 1990, after experiencing a surge of growth, the PFLAG organization hired additional staff members, employed an executive director, and relocated to Washington, D.C. In addition to this, PFLAG president Paulette Goodman sent a letter to the U.S. First Lady, Barbara Bush, the wife of former U.S. President George H.W. Bush, asking her for her support. The First Lady's personal response letter stated, I firmly believe that we cannot tolerate discrimination against any individuals or groups in our country. Such treatment always brings with it pain and perpetuates intolerance. This statement was notable for being one of the first gay positive statements to ever come from the White House. In the early 1990s, PFLAG chapters in Massachusetts made history by helping pass the first safe schools legislation in the U.S. Later on in the mid-1990s, a PFLAG family was responsible for the U.S. Department of Education's ruling that Title IX protected gay and lesbian students from harassment based on their sexual orientation. The PFLAG organization also received national news coverage for effectively showing how hate speech and hate crimes were having a serious impact on the number of LGBTQ teen suicides throughout America. Over time, the PFLAG organization became notable for expanding their missions and constituencies to include both bisexual individuals and transgender individuals. In 1998, Recognition of both gender identity and transgender people was added to the mission of PFLAC after a vote at an annual meeting in San Francisco, California. The PFLAC organization was particularly notable for being the first national LGBTQ organization to officially adopt a transgender inclusive policy, promising to include transgender people in all of their work while never supporting any policies or laws that are not trans-inclusive. In 2002, PFLAG's transgender network, known as TNET, became PFLAG's first official special affiliate, being granted the same privileges and responsibilities that were granted to the other chapters. In 2013, PFLAG's transgender network was replaced by the Transgender and Gender Nonconforming Advisory Council. In 2004, the Chicago chapter of PFLAG was officially inducted into the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Hall of Fame, further cementing the organization's influence and importance in the fight for LGBTQ rights. In 2007, PFLAG launched Straight for Equality, a national outreach and education program to empower new allies who unlike a more traditional PFLAG member, do not necessarily have a family or friend connection to the LGBTQ community. Since the 2007 launch, Straight for Equality in the Workplace has been PFLAG's most successful initiative, with a variety of workshops available to corporations and businesses in the United States. In 2009, PFLAG launched Straight for Equality in Healthcare, to educate and engage healthcare providers in all fields to be more culturally inclusive in their work. In 2012, PFLAG launched Straight for Equality in Faith Communities to highlight religious and faith-based resources for people of all denominations to begin having important conversations in their religious communities to further foster acceptance and inclusion of others. In 2014, PFLAG additionally launched a new transgender ally program through Straight for Equality as well. The PFLAG organization is also known for hosting the Straight for Equality Awards Gala, which celebrates the contributing members for the fight for LGBTQ rights. Past winners at the Straight for Equality Awards Gala include Maya Angelou, Janetta B. Cole, Liza Minnelli, Rosie Perez, Patrick Stewart, Audra McDonald, Will Swenson, Brendan Ayan Badejo, Scott Fujita, Chris Kalui, Hudson Taylor, Charlene Harris, John Irving, and Jay Baker. Another project created and run by PFLAG was Cultivating Respect 
Safe Schools for All, which is a program that supports the efforts of parents, educators, and other trusted adults to make schools more inclusive and safe. Additionally, Claim Your Rights is a project that was created by PFLAG in association with GLSEN. This project helps parents, teachers, administrators, and other trusted adults file complaints with the Office for Civil Rights in the U.S. Department of Education on behalf of youth who have experienced school-based harassment, discrimination, or bullying. Today, PFLAG is known for its work in continuing to end the so-called practice of conversion therapy, while also combating laws and policies that permit discrimination against members of the LGBTQ community. Overall, PFLAG played a major role in the LGBTQ civil and political rights movement throughout the 20th and 21st centuries. Today, many PFLAG organizations exist all across the world in countries such as China, Canada, Myanmar, and Vietnam. Thank you for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more additional content. If you have any ideas for a future video topic, please leave a comment and let me know what you would like to see me cover next. I'm really hoping to grow this channel and provide you all with more content in the future, and your support means the world to me. Thanks everyone!